Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of the Make Code Arcade Advanced Stream. I'm Richard at Richard on the Make Code Forum. And I'm Thomas at Sparks on the Make Code Forum. And to start out today, uh, we had a question in chat before we even started from QB Phoenix, which is the mini game jam stream win. Um, it'll be next week, probably on Friday. Um, so we did an extra week for this mini game jam because um, I just messed up doing the initial thing because I was sick. Um, also, Here's the other news about that. You know, maybe I'll wait till other people have joined the stream before I say the other news about it. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't know? No, no, I'm very curious. Oh, yeah, I'll just say it. Um, I'm planning on, for many game jams, I'm now going to throw out to forum members and live stream viewers more often to come up with themes, because I think Lucas did a good job and had a lot of fun doing it. Um, so I'll just say, Kiwi Phoenix, you're on the list for making a mini game jam theme. So maybe think up. What do you want to do for that? Um, I thought you meant more more news about Joe being sick. I thought you were going to unveil some chronic condition or something, but I'm glad no, that's the, not the case. More, the fact more that about I'm the still coughing. Is better. Um, yeah. yeah, no, I'm fine now, but I, I, I'm one of those people who, when they get a cough, the, the cough stays for many weeks after the sickness. You know, it's no fun. Sorry. Yeah, well, whatever. All right. Um, so yeah, last time we started working on um, the AI for our little enemies. Um, and that's what we're going to be working on today. It'll be fun. This is kind of a different than most of the AIs we've done in the past, because in the past, whenever we were doing it, it was mainly for sprites that just moved like normal style, like all four directions. But now we're kind of doing this thing where we have to actually turn and then move. You know? Oh, and I think to everyone's delight, I did not... I completely forgot about it until just now that I was supposed to fix that leg bug. Ah, uh, so it seems like it's still doing the whole snapped from the center thing. <laughs> I noticed, so I think maybe I know, we just yeah. didn't fix that. I think so. Um. All right. Well, you know what? Let's let's we'll we'll, we'll try to fix that real quick. Um, before hey, we start Sarah. on other things, just because it is very distracting. Hey, Sarah. Hey, sorry, I'm late. Uh, no problem. Just glad you're here. OK, um, so we are going to uh, try and fix that leg thing, which we made a stab at last time, but um, we'll do it again um, this time. So I, I guess let me show off the, the bug once again. Um, you'll see it pretty obviously. Um, so when the game starts up. I forgot this project is so big, and when I'm running Teams and OBS, projects take much longer to load. Um, you can see the legs are going crazy. Um, they are just flying around like they have some weird physics and just shooting past where they're supposed to be. And then finally they snap into place. They, they figure it out. Um, so we're going to fix that. We're going to fix that book. Um, let's go ahead and do that right now. So um, if you remember, I actually have a separate project that the bug president and the bugs are kind of implemented inside. Um, it's a little extension I made, and um, <coughs> we're going to um, test this out and see if we can fix it. Um, to test this out, we are going to, um, inside of here, go into pxt.json, edit settings as text. What's the rule about editing settings as text? Thomas, do you I'm know the rule? do it if you're Richard. Yeah, never do it. Um, so, uh, you can really mess up your project if you don't know what you're doing. Um, so you got to be very careful or if you break the JSON. Um, but what I'm doing right now is I'm going to add a test file. Um, and so what this does is um, when I have this test.ts, by default when you add a file, um, it's going to go ahead and show up inside of my pxt.json. Um, Ooh, it did not add it to my PXDIJ, so that's interesting. But anyway, um, so this test.ts right here, I think maybe it was because it was called test.ts. I'm going to add this to my test files. Um, and this will now run only when I have this project loaded in the editor. It will not run if I add it as an extension in another project. So we can write some code in here to test it, and it won't affect our other project, um, which is what I want. So. Let's head on over to our test.ts. And I'm now going to create a bug president. So 
equals Mr. President dot create. <laughs> and um, we need to move them in that. Well, first, let's make sure this is running. There we go. There's our president. Um, we need to move him over so we can see the legs going all crazy. So we're going to do S dot X equals past the end of the screen. We'll do 200. And let us see if our. Yeah, they were definitely. Like they're still doing that thing, but they're not going quite as crazy as they were in the other one. Maybe I need to go farther. Hmm. I thought it would be crazier. Well, anyway, this is still we still want to fix this thing, so I have a feeling if we fix this, it'll fix the other one. You know. This is good enough. Yep, I think so. All right, so we're going to head on over to our custom.ts, which is where all this stuff is actually implemented. And we have this um, <laughs> code here. So basically the way that bug president is implemented is um, we every time we pass a certain amount of distance, uh, we take a step. All right. Um, and uh, the steps just keep happening. We have this function position legs, which um, actually takes the legs and puts them into the right positions and they move to the right position based off of where they should be. So let's look at that position legs real quick. Um, where are you position legs? Yeah, here we go. OK. So um, we move the legs and we also have this extra parameter teleport. And if this teleport is set to true, they will just teleport to the destination. Otherwise, they will move to the destination over time. And so the basic thing that we're trying to do here is if we are really far away from where the legs previously were, we just want them to teleport to the correct destination. We don't want them to, you know, uh, what's the what's the word I'm looking for? We don't want them to uh, move because that that's what's causing this crazy behavior. <coughs> um, I still don't know exactly why it's causing that crazy behavior, but it is. So yeah, we're not because oh, like, no. we're not setting the velocity or anything. So you'd think once it got there, it would just stop. I think I'm actually calling position legs every frame. Is that true? Oh, so it's always. So are we not calling position legs with like the final destination? We're just calling it incrementally. Is that what you're saying? No, so it is always going with the um, the same destination every time. But what's happening is we're never getting to the part where we snap. Instead, it's moving and then it's doing another move and it's doing another move and it's doing another move and because it's never hitting the exact destination it goes past and now it needs to like go back to the original thing and just kind of ends up out the ground it's never like getting to the position and stopping um <coughs> at least i think this is getting called every frame we can test that out really quickly um i'm going to go to this position legs as well print out whether or not teleport is true rather than sure. Yeah. All right, so this is printing out now and we can see legs false, false, legs true, legs false, false. Um, OK, so this is not getting called every frame. You can see that right now. Um, <laughs> by the way, the reason I printed out math.random was because by default our console collapses console entries, and I wanted to see if it was going every frame, so I just made it so that it wouldn't collapse it because it's printing something different every time. That's the only reason I did that stupid thing. All right. Um, so that's an interesting result. Um, Gosh, I really wish it was doing the exact problem that we saw before. I wonder why it's not. Can we um, go to where we set teleport? Based on those values, I'm wondering if we just have the comparison opposite to what it's supposed to be. Oh, wait, what am I doing? I want to look for everywhere position like this is called. Um, right, OK, so in this reset legs function, we're just always setting it to false. Um, 
in here we are doing false. There's I remember there's one place where we set it true. So we do it down below where we say right here. distance is greater than no, that looks right. Yeah. yeah, right there. So if distance is greater than step distance type times three, that's when we do this. Um translate this this teleport. Um so it's possible that what's happening is um Let's see, where do we set this last step X, last step Y? OK, so we set it, we do set it inside the constructor right here. <laughs> so when we teleport next frame and the update runs, this should be interpreting that as a really long distance that we're traveling. Um, it looks like in here we also call position legs true, false, like that. Um, let's go ahead and put this as um, teleport. In the constructor because we don't actually need them to move to the right position. Yeah. That it's not going to change anything, but you know, just for my own sanity. Um, all right, so we're doing true, 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 and then we have these two false that are running. Uh, so these these are the ones from the constructor, and then this is the one from the update where they should have teleported to the right position. Yeah. They just expect to stop at that point. Yeah, and I don't know why it's getting called two more times. So because it's only being called called five times, though, let's just oh, we can't run the debugger. Oh, could it be because we call reset legs at the end? Is that true? Because reset legs, we added to false as well. Oh, well, maybe not. Looks it's like it's only the, called here. Yeah, called here moving. and this should not be running. Well, it's got move with velocity set, not in this test, but in front of. True, it does in the um, Although, other code. But this is this should all be after the initial stuff that it's probably a red herring. Yeah. All right. Here, you know what? We can try and track this down in the code all day, but maybe what we want to do is instead, um, inside of this move leg function. Let's just calculate what the distance is. And if the distance is crazy, we will teleport. And if it's not, we won't. And we'll just fix it right there at the source. You know? Um, Sounds good. <laughs> so um, we're going to do if uh, sprite utils dot distance between, um, and we can pass in our sprite and our position is greater than, what's a good number for this? Um, Well, step distance times three seems like a good. It is. We don't have that right here. I can pass it in now. Oh, I see. Yeah, sure. Let's let's do that. We'll we'll pass in step distance. So Kiwi Phoenix asked, "What do you all think about F zero ninety nine? I don't. Um, know. I haven't played, played it yet, but I like F zero. Um, the original one. Have it right. It's my first time hearing about it. Yeah, it's like um. Yeah, here we go. F zero da 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 for the Super Nintendo. Um, uh, very fun game. Yeah, they they basically took the F zero, but they turned it into like a battle royale type thing where you're playing against a bunch of other people. I believe. Is it really ninety nine? That's crazy. <laughs> you know that's what it's called, but um. I guess it would make sense. I think I actually remember playing this on what did you say it was, Richard? What console? The GameCube or the Nintendo 64? Uh, it was the Super Nintendo. Um, there was an F Zero for both the Nintendo 64 and GameCube. That was uh, F Zero X for N64 and F Zero GX for GameCube. Interesting. Yeah, I feel like I remember playing these games. This was so fun. I love the the pixel art for it too. It's really good. Yeah, I don't know why they haven't made another. Um, yeah, so the 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 whole art and style and everything that is one hundred percent from the Super Nintendo um, version. I think the Super Nintendo version was a launch game on the um, on the Switch. 
not Switch, Super Nintendo. Um, uh, teleport equals true. Okay, they're still taking. Like, it's still taking. Seems like they frame. teleported that time, but <laughs> it is teleporting, but it's taking a frame to figure that out. You know. Mm. Um, yeah. Trying to pull him back into screen, but I might have, I might be too far off base now. Um, okay, so it is teleporting. That's good. Um, we can go ahead now and uh, might as well just leave it. That's fine. Um, but uh, I want it to not be doing that initial frame thing. So how do we fix that? Well, what's happening is um, our sprite is getting created. It's being drawn to the screen. And then the update is running next frame, right? Um, and that next frame update is causing it to uh, update, like reset its legs. Um, so in order to make it so that we uh, set the position and then uh, the legs immediately snap before that next frame draw happens. What I'm going to do here is um, do, uh, so right here I have this scene.update priority plus one. I'm adding a thing that's going to run after the update. Um, update priority, by the way, is when game dot on update runs. So when game dot, those, those normal game on game update events we use. Um, uh, and I'm going to inside of here do another function. So I have this update function. I'm going to do post update. Go. I don't need the rest of this. And uh, what we're going to do, oh, let me get rid of this console log. What we're going to do is um, legs init equals false. If not, legs uh, this dot, or I guess we just do if this dot legs init return this dot legs and it equals true and uh, we're going to go ahead and copy the reset legs function actually i just want this bit All right, that should do it. All right, so you saw we did not see. We no longer see the legs snapping over. And now we just need to make sure we didn't break things. So we're going to go over to our test.ts and put this guy back on screen. We'll just set him to 160, so we have off screen. All right, there's our guy. Ooh, OK. Um, we need to do something a little bit less than step distance or a little bit more than step distance time three. Because um, I don't know, you probably can't see it on the team's call, but on the Twitch stream, you can see that the uh, yeah. the legs are teleporting when we turn. It looks kind of matrixy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think you're right. So we'll head on back out over to custom.ts. Do do do. Step distance times five. Seems like that's working. So work on a bigger bug. Good question. Um, I mean, isn't this what a big isn't this bug president's size? Am I wrong? 
You might be right. I can't. I don't know. It felt a little smaller to me, but I think you're right. Actually, I think that is bug press note size. I think it is. Yeah. OK, uh, we're going to go ahead and share this now. Head back over to our actual bug president project. And now you're going to see me do another crazy thing, which I explained last time, but um, just this is another only if you're Richard thing that I'm currently doing. Um, so we're going to switch to JavaScript. We're going to delete our bug president extension right here. Get out of here. We're going to have a bunch of errors in our project now. Wait for it. Wait for it. There we go, 91 errors. Um, we're going to go to extensions. We're going to add this guy. Yeah, our updated code. Now our errors are going to go away. But we're not going to go switch back to blocks yet because I don't want the decompiler to run. I want all my blocks to be where I left them. And so there's a way to trick make code into not running the decompiler. You should never do this, being very clear, unless you're Richard. But uh, you can just uh, and go to blocks, discard and go to blocks. Takes forever to load, and my blocks are right where I left them. So, again, never do this. All right, and our bug is fixed. Sorry, little guy. There he is, walking around. What a cutie! All right. <laughs> so again, never do that. But um, I can do it because I'm me. All right. Um, so uh, let's get to what we were actually going to do today, which is the AI for this guy. Um, so I'm going to collapse blocks format code. And I believe we put this inside of a function. Yes, we did. Add enemy AI. So the way we typically do AI in um, arcade games is we're using this on enemy update function, which you can find inside of sprite utils. It's just an on game update, but it runs for one sprite. Um, and you can dock it inside a function, which is nice. And uh, we're storing a state inside of our sprite using sprite data. So we have this state thing. We currently have the state turning, and then we are going to have uh, moving forward. So the idea is we're going to check if the state is turning. If it is, then we turn. And we've already done that one. You saw our guy was turning around. Then if the state is moving forward, we want to walk forward for some amount of time. And then we want to switch the state back to turning and just keep doing that. So we're just going to have this guy keep walking turn, walk, turn, walk, turn, walk. You get the idea. <coughs> All right. So um, we're already setting the state to moving forward, but we just have this else case that is setting it back to turning. So we're going to put a um, if right here, and we're going to say if state as string equals moving forward. All right, and um, we now need to uh, do the actual moving forward bit. Now, here's the tricky part. We want to move forward for some amount of time and then switch back to a different state. All right, so we need some sort of timer that is keeping track of our like state transitions. Um, and so what I would normally do um, is I would create in Sprite data, I would just create a number. I would set every time I changed state, I would set that number. But the thing is, I don't want to do that because it's going to be really tedious. I'm going to have to go to everywhere I change the state and also put in another thing that's setting the number in the same place. So we're going to automatically do this. Um, the way we're going to do this is I'm going to make a variable right here, which is going to be um, last state. And we're going to set this inside of the top of our update, right? <laughs> we're going to set this to be whatever our state currently is. Now down here at the bottom, we're going to say if doing equals um, grab this state right here. So if our state does not equal whatever that last state variable was, means it changed. 
So we're just going to store a number now, which is just going to be the current time, which is the time that our state changed. And this is going to let us do timer stuff. Um, so grab our sprite. State change time. And we're just going to pass in the current game time like that. All right, cool. So with that, let's do our moving forward. So for moving forward, what we're going to do is <coughs> um, first, we are going to check that thing that we just placed. So if we're going to say if the um, number that we have, grab this, this game state change time is uh, less than and then we're going to do game time minus however long we want to walk forward I'm just going to do a second um or wait, 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 wait. Yeah, no, that's right. This is right. Yeah. Then we're going to set our state to turning. Um, else, we are going to make our guy walk forward. So set moving forward right here to true. And then in here, we also want to set it to false. All right, let's go look at that. Should it not be a greater than the time check? <coughs> Should it? State change time. So I'm doing the current time minus 1,000. Um, we want to check if it's been a second since it started. So yeah, you know what? Why I don't know why I wrote this this insane way. We're just going to do time since start minus state change time is greater than 1,000. That's the correct way to take this. That's easier to reason about, yes. Yeah. Um, no, let's see if that fixed it for us. Nope, still not moving. Um, all right. Do we have to set the speed? No, no, it has a default speed, doesn't it? It does have a default speed, yeah. So if state equals turning, there you go, then we're doing set state to moving forward like that. Um, oh, right, we need to set this target heading. I think this is actually working correctly. It's just um, moving forward once and then never moving forward again. Nope, nope, definitely not. <laughs> oh, I put this inside the else. I always do stuff like that. There he goes. Dude, it's uh, really, really wants to go left and down. Yeah, seems like it. <laughs> yeah, there he goes. I was wondering if we wanted to, uh, maybe this math would be more trouble than it's worth, just bias the turn direction so that it turns back towards its spawn location. That Not is like 100%, but just kind of. That's 100% in the plan, uh, okay. Thomas. Um, so it's actually what we're going to do right now. Cool. Um, <laughs> so, um, right, we want this guy to mainly stay in his territory, all right? So when we initially spawn him, we want to store that um, X and Y, and then um, kind of keep him in that area. Um, so 
let's do that right now. We can just do it inside of this add enemy AI um, because this gets called when it gets created. So um, we're going to go into our sprite utils, not sprite utils, regular sprites. You can grab set data to number, not change. Set data to number. Grab our enemy, and we're going to be home. Hey, now, come on, type. Home X to enemy X. Like that. Home Y to enemy Y. <coughs> and uh, what we're going to do now is um, I think this might work well enough, but we're going to try it out and see. And actually, let me get rid of this else right now because um, it's annoying me. No, I guess we need the. We need this bit. I'm getting rid of that. Um, well, actually, let me see if that just broke it. It might have just broken it. Yeah, that broke it. Um, we're going to set this to um, moving forward instead. That should fix it. Yeah, there you go. All right, so if we are a certain amount of distance from the home, we're just going to, when we turn, turn back to the home. All right. Um, and I think that might be enough correction. Um, and not look like completely wrong. Um, Ham is asking, does this mean Joey is the stream bot? You know, it's becoming increasingly unclear where the stream, where Joey ends and the stream bot begins. You know, um, have you ever seen Akira? Um, <coughs> Anyway, um, OK, so uh, we want to, um, uh, like I said, check our distance from our home position. And then we're setting our target heading right here. So if our distance is a certain amount, instead of setting the target to you know this facing direction plus 45 degrees, we are just going to figure out what the right position is to head back home and then head back home. Um, so let's figure out that distance. Go right here. Greater than, and uh, we want to set this. We want to get the distance, which Sprite Utils has a thing for. Where are you? Distance between. There you go. And um, we can pass into the second argument this x y like this. So we're going to get the distance between our sprites. and um, their home X, home Y. So let me grab this and change this to home X. Change this to home Y. And if the distance is greater than 60, then we will <coughs> um set our target heading to um the direction which is going to be um the angle from our sprite to and then i just want the same home position like that all right let's see if that works Yeah, I think that is what it's doing. I think it's doing the right, you know, doing what we programmed it to do. 
I'm wondering how we can make it avoid walls a little more intelligently. Yeah, we have to do that. Um, can just do like <laughs> if it's touching a wall, turn around 180. It won't work so well in corners. Yeah, we'll have to figure something out. Um, okay, so he's too far away now, so he's turning all the way around. Good job, little dude. Nice <laughs> walk. Are the yeah. walls? The walls are tiles, right? Not sprites. Correct. Um, they are walls, though. Um, and we do, we can check if, um, okay, so right here is our moving forward code. This is when we're walking forward. So we're going to go ahead and do if, um, and check if we are hitting a wall. So inside of scene, we have is hitting wall, and unfortunately, <laughs> it's in four directions. Gosh. So we're going to have to that drop down. What? We need to add an any to that drop down, if you like. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I've never been in this scenario before, but <laughs> yeah, I guess we do. OK, left, top, and now duplicate. Or that right there, that right there, right, bottom. There we go. Checking if we're hitting a wall. All right. If we're hitting a wall, then we are going to immediately transition <laughs> into turning. So we're going to um, set moving forward to false. We are going to um, grab our target heading. And uh, we're going to add, I guess we'll do a 50% chance, just like we were before. And instead of adding 45, we will add 90. That should work, right? Seems like it. Oh, we forgot to set the state. I was going to say there might be some weird edge cases, but then I realized these are all edge cases. Kind of. Haha. -ha. You're welcome. That's what I'm here for. All right. OK, you hit that wall. Then you turned around. Turn, still turning. Still turning. Still turning. Just stuck to that wall forever. Do we? Are we going to immediately transition in because he's still touching the wall? Um, the second it moves back. Yeah. Like it happening. turns. Yeah. So we need to move him away from the wall. Um. We could check the time since state change. See if it's greater than like. We, we can we can. Is make it this also happen. a problem because it's not move? We're not triggering a move forward immediately. Like we're no. telling them to face a direction and then not moving. Because the it'll turn and then it'll start moving forward again. But the problem is it's moving forward. It's just immediately hitting this case again. Gotcha. Um, but we we can move it away from the wall. So what we're going to do is this place angle from distance. Um like that. And uh, what we're going to do is we are going to place our sprite. The angle that we're going to place it at is going to be its facing direction. Plus pi. Um, which is the exact opposite direction means going backwards. And the sprite we are going to be placing it from is itself. And we will place it back one pixel. Might be good enough. See what happens. Yeah. Should do it. Corners thwarted us immediately. <laughs> Talk about corner case. Milk that one. 
Where's the? We need that. Like, we still need sound effects. I'm gonna advocate for that every single time I'm here. <laughs> okay. Well, this one didn't even fail in the corner. Just completely failed. Yeah. Uh, let's set this to two. How many pixels wide are their little feet? Um, I think they're just two pixels wide, but they don't actually count towards collision, so. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now nah, this this just isn't working. I vote we only run the check if it's been ten milliseconds since the last state change. Might be a little I bit of a but... Sure. Okay. That seems hacky, but I am yeah. I'm for it. going to make it a hundred though because yeah, that, that's fair yeah I fixed it. Seems to be working. Yeah. A lot of just kind of turning into the wall and then. Yeah, you know, never mind. It's fine. It's he's figuring it out reasonably well that I think this might be good enough. I'd say so. All right. <laughs> Head on back. Good, good fire bug. All right. Has, well, has Sarah seen the fire bug breathe fire yet? Oh, yeah, I can make him breathe fire. I have not. Is it going to be also, I'm, like, is it one of those things where you have to kind of avoid it seeing you kind of deal? Yeah, so... um Let's wait till he's like somewhere not on a wall. There you go. So you can see he has a little fire breathing. Oh my gosh! Attack. So talented. Um, <laughs> that's going to destroy your bugs. It's going to murder your little guys. Um, that makes me sad. But yeah, it's still well, such a talented bug. <laughs> it's part of Pikmin, you know. Is um, yeah. Is it's it, as I told Thomas, it's kind of a game about death, also. Um, Dang. I love it. All right. Um, so that brings us, we've got our wandering behavior, it's working well. Um, we want to have another behavior though, which is we need them to target bugs. Um, so. <coughs> How do we do this? Well, um, I think that it's a good idea for them to, um, we will detect them if they're within a certain range, and we will detect them if they are within an angle, like cone of vision, basically. Um, and let's say it does detect them, what do we do then? So I guess we go into like seeking mode. Right, where <coughs> we keep track of whichever bug we're following, um, and uh, we'll keep trying to angle towards it and move. And then when we're when we're within a certain distance, we will attack, and we'll make there be a certain amount of time in between attacks. Sounds good to me. Yeah. So that's the idea. All right. Um. So, do we already have like, is there any animation that's going to happen when our worker bugs die? Or are they just going to like fall off the screen <laughs> like in Mario? Um, we are going to do a little animation. Um, so, in Pikmin, what happens, and I'm going to copy it here, is when one of your Pikmin dies, a little Pikmin ghost comes up and floats into the sky. We're going to be doing something like that. 
Nice. I guess yeah. this is a Nintendo bug killing thing. It's like that's what happens in Animal Crossing too. If you run over a cockroach in your room, mm. then the, the ghost just leaves. It's, it's kind of sad, but then it congratulates you for killing all your bugs. So I don't, I don't know. <laughs> that's true. Um, I did always feel weird about that. Also, I hate that when you be, it makes you feel so guilty when you leave your Animal Crossing village for a long time and come back, and then it's like terrible. <laughs> I'm not above messing with my clock to prevent that from happening. Um, okay. So, um, this is our idle behavior. Um, so we're going to go ahead and, um, inside of here, we are going to set our, uh, we're going to set another state thing, basically. Um, so here, let me grab where I'm setting state. Well, no, we're going to do this one as a Boolean. So, fill in two sprites, grab set Boolean. Set it on our enemy. And this is going to be um, hunting to false. All right, so if not hunting, All right, I want to make this hunting. Then we're going to do all this stuff that we've been doing so far. But I need to make sure I grab this last state thing and put it back down here at the bottom. All right, now this else is going to be where we do our hostile behavior. Um, first, though, we need to actually trigger the hunting. So at the bottom of our um, not hunting, we're going to go ahead and um, do a check. Um, right, and so to do this check, we are going to Basically, and I'm hoping this won't end up being too slow, um, we're going to loop over all of the bugs, figure out our distance. Well, we'll inside of Sprite Tools, actually, there's a thing for this. Get all sprites of kind within 50 pixels from this. So within this distance, we're going to get all of the sprites. And um, we're going to check to see if any of them are in our line of sight. So for now, because it's easier, we're just going to use bug president. <coughs> so we're going to um, set targets to this and um, change this to be our sprite right here. And bug president is of kind player. And we're going to set this to be 60. All right, so everyone was in within 60. Now what we're going to do is um, check to see if they are in our line of sight. So we're going to figure out what the angle from, I guess uh, we're going to do this inside of a for loop. So we're going to do a for of, for value of targets. And we're going to set this into a variable. I'm going to make this um, temp angle. Do our angle from <laughs> our um, sprite to whichever bug we're looking at. And um, we now need to figure out, uh, this is math I hate doing. Uh, I wish Joey was here. He always tells me how to do it. <laughs> um, so we have our facing angle, right? We have our facing angle, and we have the angle we want to be looking at. All right? We need to figure out the difference between those two angles. So you're like, what? Easy. It's just subtraction. But it's not. Because we're dealing with a circle. And so there is the possibility that the difference between 359 and 1 is not 358 degrees, it's two degrees, you know? So we have to intelligently figure that out. Um, if you just took the minimum <laughs> A minus B and the minimum and B minus A. I think what it is, is you do, you do, no, because it's not that. 
Yeah, you're right. That would solve the problem. Is it mod 360? So yes, we do need to mod it 360. Um, and actually, let me just go ahead and convert this into degrees right now because we're going to be doing this in degrees. Sorry, all you Radiance fans. Um, Radiance two degrees like that. So I think what we want to do is we we want to mod them both by 360 so they're within zero between 360 then because they might be negative or positive whatever. Um, <laughs> and um, we need to um, uh, figure out the difference. And if the difference is greater than 180, then we do the other thing. We add 360 to whichever one of them is lower and then do the difference, I think. Sounds reasonable. Uh, why is Joey Khan? Joey knows what to do because we've done this so <laughs> many times on stream that I just made him memorize it. Kiwi Phoenix said add a bunch of 360s and mod. Yeah, it's not good enough, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. So the other case you're worried about is trying to go like the going counterclockwise instead of going clockwise, basically. Going counterclockwise instead of going clockwise. Um, yeah, so like I said, the, the, the problem is just if we're going over the zero mark. OK. Um, and, you know, because then, then we can't get the difference. It doesn't matter which one is on either side. You know, it's wrong in both cases. So there's four cases we have to handle. Um, they are uh, if the distance is not greater, if the, if the angle difference is not greater than 180, it's fine. We just do the subtraction. That that that's all good. Um, and uh, in that case, we just need to figure out which one's bigger and then do the subtraction that way. Um, if they are, if one of them, uh, if the difference is greater than 180, then we need to figure out which one of them is bigger. Um, we need to add 360 to the smaller one and then do the difference that way, I think. Yeah, I think. It's either that or it's the opposite. We need to subtract 360 from the bigger one and then do the difference. Um, so <laughs> we're going to um, grab the absolute right here, grab a minus. And um, we want to do uh, the temp angle minus degrees to radians of our facing direction. Um, Pixel Doodles, by the way, was asking, just logged into stream, what game are you all working on? Uh, we are working on a Pikmin game. Um, so it's called Bug President. Um, so you see, this is Bug President. I can go ahead and call up my bug citizens, um, and I can throw them to do tasks for me. So here, I'm going to have these guys carry these grapes. Have these guys carry this pomegranate to the ant hill. That lemon. Go for it. See, they're growing in, and as I do that, I get points. So call them all back. Pick up the watermelon. Takes a while. Um, and we have these enemies right here um, that we're doing the AI for today, but we're out of time. <laughs> so we're going to work on this more um, in Monday. Hugh Phoenix says, you're going to make a function. You know what? You know what? You know what? I'm just going to add this to Sprite Utils. I'm going to add a block that is make a diff t find the angle dist difference. OK, and it's going to make me so happy. Um, That's a good idea. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, anyway, thank you for tuning in. Now, um, as a reminder, Mini Game Jam is still going on. Um, we are going to be doing the stream where we play through everybody's games next Friday. So if you can make it for that, please definitely tune in. Um, we're going to be playing through all those Mini Game Jam games. Um, and uh, like I said, we are going to, for Mini Game Jams, we are now going to do a thing where I think sometimes I'm going to be throwing out to community members in order to pick the theme for our Mini Game Jams. Um, and I think I already decided, Q Phoenix, you're next. So do think about what you want the mini game jam theme to be, just because you are one of the most frequent stream viewers and mini game jam participants. So I do believe you have earned the right. Um, with that, 
Um, I am Richard at Richard on the Make Code Forum. I'm Thomas at Sparks on the Make Code Forum. And I'm Sarah at S Richard on the Make Code Forum. And we will see you on Monday. Bye.